Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Matt Zaglin, Kelly Cook, Jeff Wilkes, and our brand new patrons, Alex, Lynn, and Jordan. Yay! On this episode of DTNS, Apple announces a new iPad mini and everybody else announces their new tech products too. Plus, Spotify expands music videos and Android 15 is here. Woo! Quinceanera! This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. So... Is it a quinceanera for Android at 15? Right, that's right. I mean, I, I know I it's they're not. I know it's tax day for the... all the people who didn't do it in April. Oh yeah, my accountant knows that too. She yeah. was like, "I'll mm-hmm. talk to you later." <laughs> yeah. I have all the people who didn't yeah. do their taxes. A lot, lot, lot of freaking out. A <laughs> lot of freaking yeah. out. A little bit. A uh, little bit. People. Uh, yeah, October 15th in the U.S. The new April 15th. All right, let's start with the quick hits. <laughs> YouTube added a new, uh, a few new features. Playback speed can now be controlled in increments of 0.5 or 0.05 instead of 0.25. So you'll be able to build playlists with friends by sharing a link and eventually with a QR code as well. And a sleep timer can be set to pause videos after a certain amount of time from 10 minutes up to an hour. One complaint about pass keys is that despite being faster, simpler, and more secure than your password, you can't move them from one device to another. Moving them introduces a security risk since the wrong person could try to move them and you don't want that. So the FIDO Alliance has introduced two new standards for moving pass keys between devices, the Credential Exchange Protocol, or CXP, and the Credential Exchange Format, or CXF. The CXP lets you securely move a password between devices, and the CXF governs the format that it will take. One Password has already announced support for the new standards when they're ready to be implemented. Dashlane, Bitwarden, NordPass, and Google also worked on the standards and intend to support them. Industry review will take some time, though, uh, so the standards are not expected to be implemented until next year. Instagram announced the launch of profile cards to help users share information. The cards have two slides and include a profile picture, link, music, and QR code. The cards are designed to help share profiles without having to type out your username. They're cute. I guess. I'll probably make one. Yeah. According to the Bank of Korea, price rises for DRAM slowed for the second consecutive month. That means they're getting more expensive, just not as fast. They're not going up as fast as they were. South Korea is the world's largest exporter of memory chips, so they're often an indicator of how the market is going. The deceleration in prices indicates we might be near the peak of new demand for RAM that was caused by the AI boom. Global sales of electric vehicles rose 30.5% year-over-year in September as China rose 47.9% to beat its own record set in August, and Europe returned to growth. After a decline, sales in both the U.S. and Canada continued to grow slowly, up 4.3%. We have a lot of Google news today, so I packaged it all together for you. Uh, We're going to serve the Google news four ways. Our first way, the chef has repaired Google Shopping, getting generated summaries with tips on shopping for the item you're looking for. The example they used was a a green teapot needs to have a gooseneck uh, when you pour the steam out. They'll tell you that in the summary. Uh, There's also an algorithmically generated listing of results based on what it knows about your preferences so that you will see things that you are interested in, as well as personalized deals page for the kinds of things you like to shop for. I mean, it all depends on how good this is, right? Yeah, yeah, I... I I don't know. I, I, I feel like short summaries are where algorithms shine I'm the most yeah. for me. Um, so, so yeah. So yeah. I'm just worried that the shopping algorithm is going to show me a bunch of things I just bought. Cause that's usually what happens with ads is you buy something and then you start getting ads for the thing you just bought and don't need anymore. Cause you just bought it. Yeah, totally. Um, I think that, yeah, that's a, re- that's a really good point. I mean, I think that if, an algorithm knows you just bought something. Are are you for sure going to buy that thing again soon? 
or no. probably not, <laughs> you know, for like <laughs> a couple of years, yeah. you know, like a pair Store of shoes type away. thing. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that's where I think th- this can all get a little smarter. Maybe, uh, maybe this will be better. Maybe this will be better. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Google is also partnering with a nuclear, nuclear reactor maker. We talked about with Molly Wood about all the different companies that are getting into nuclear power to power data centers. Uh, these are new reactors, not existing ones. Google has committed to buy power from seven reactors to be built by a startup called Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. Kairos uses molten fluoride salt as a coolant, not water, uh, and their reactors are a little smaller. Normal reactor capacity is around 1,000 megawatts. These are 500 megawatts. No location has been chosen yet, uh, but Google will have data centers somewhere in the region of wherever they choose to build these. Of course, they have to get all the approvals and all of that. Uh, Kairos says it will have the reactors online between 2030 and 2035. Uh, seems like tech is powering more nuclear reactors. I mean, we talked to Molly about that, but we just keep seeing these stories ever since. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess my only question about this is using molten fluoride salt rather than water is that worse or better for the environment? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, the but answer that is would, yes. That, it is. Be, it is arguably better. I mean, you'll get an argument from everybody because uh, you're it. basically t- taking salt water from the sea. Well, no, uh, it's molten fluoride salt uh, in a contained system as a coolant, and that's more efficient. You're not just using wastewater, and and we have water. We have water droughts right now. So if you can use something else, that's better. Right. Well, yeah, that, I mean, I guess that that was my point is like, there are a lot of things that see what like you can't just like drink seawater all day and, you know, become hydrated. But if that if something that is salty and also water based can, you know, help in a situation like this seems seems like a, you know, at least a good uh, a good thing to try out. Google sent the warning that the manifest V2 extension deprecation will soon mean it will block extensions that continue to use it and recommends the extension makers switch to manifest V3. The short version of this is your ad blockers are going to stop working in some cases because the new manifest V3 restricts what the extensions can do to control browser functions. Uh, Google says it's a security measure. U Origin says it's to stop our ad blockers from working well. Uh, in practice, it does mean that ad blockers like the one from uBlock don't work as well as they did. So uBlock Origin is going to stop working in Chrome. Few others will as well because they don't support V3. Now uBlock makes uBlock Origin light, uh, which is the only one that uses V3. But uBlock very clearly separates that to say that one won't work as well because it doesn't have the browser access. Weirdly, over the weekend, well, maybe not weirdly, um, I I used an ad blocker that allowed me to sometimes read articles that were behind a paywall and stopped working. And I asked the person who originally uh, suggested this to me, I was like, you know, is that working for you? And he was like, oh yeah, no, not, (laughs) nope, we're not, we're not on that train anymore. And, you know, um, I think the, the extension situation, which I went through, you know, it, it kind of got me down on this path of like, okay, what Chrome extensions am I using? Because I predominantly do use Chrome and there are some extensions that work for me for various reasons, but for stuff that I think, you know, is designed to get you around an otherwise, you know, locked area of the internet. Um, it, uh, it, it definitely changed for me over the last week. The other thing to keep in mind is that Firefox, Brave and Vivaldi all will continue to support manifest V2. Uh, so that's one of the reasons uBlock Origin is keeping that version available is you can you can use it on other Chromium based browsers as well as Firefox, which is a different platform, of course. But uh, it's just Google's version of Chrome that this is going to go away. And so in this case, to your point, uh, there are options that, that you can have out there. Yeah. Uh, And finally, our last little bit of Google-related news that our chef has prepared for you today is Android 15, uh, slow-cooked by your carrier, uh, rolling out to Google Pixel users (laughs) starting now. 
Uh, the word actually leaked out a little early on the Google German Pixel community forum. They, they posted all the details and then had to pull it down, uh, but it was confirmed by 10 a.m. Pacific anyway. Uh, the update does come through carriers worldwide over the next week. So if you don't get it today, uh, within a week, you should probably get it. I mean, I don't have a Pixel, so I mean, this doesn't really apply to me. Would I to borrow mine? Would, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be over at your house in an hour from now. Come on, yeah, the way more will get you. But no, I, I, the the leak stuff always gives me a chuckle. You know, it's like sometimes leaks were intentional, but otherwise it's like, hey, everybody, let's look alive here. I, I this mean, very clearly was not intentional, right? Because it came, right. I don't know, like six hours before the actual announcement, and it was pulled down really fast. Like, oh, somebody pressed the publish button by mistake. Is what it looked. Right, like. right, and you know, <laughs> things yeah. happen. I mean, I have hundred percent done this uh, more than once, uh, but it just, you know, it's the whole sort of like, okay, all right, who is running the ship here? Yeah. You know, like who, who, you know, uh, you know, when are we when are we supposed to announce this? Six hours from now? Okay, don't press publish. I've accidentally pressed the publish button before. You yeah, know. I'll, yeah. I'll cop to it. Yeah. It's, it's happened. I also accidentally commented out the entire content management system once so that no one could. could I once use tweeted it. out Martin Sargent's phone number by accident. Yeah. Yeah, I actually that, tweeted my own phone number out. <laughs> that was, yeah, way back in the early days. But I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. I really yeah. didn't. So, um, Well, Spotify did give more people music videos or will, I guess, on purpose, right? Yeah. So, uh, yes, Spotify says it's testing bringing music videos to 85 more markets than it currently has. The videos can be watched either on mobile or desktop and you can switch between audio and video mid song you know maybe you're watching a video you keep wanting to listen to the song but you you know can't look at the uh, computer anymore type thing the company started the test in 11 countries back in march so brazil colombia egypt germany indonesia italy kenya the netherlands the philippines poland sweden and the uk already have it Spotify didn't specify which countries are in the next 85, including whether or not the U.S. was part of this, which uh, I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, we have a we have bigger rights. <laughs> it's more expensive to launch a music product in the United States. I think the top music markets, if I if I remember correctly, are the U.S., Japan, Europe and China. Like in that order too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I would imagine those are the markets you want to launch in last uh, if you're, you know, still making sure you've got everything squared away. Uh, I watch music videos a lot these days and I watch them occasionally in Apple Music, which has had music videos for a long time, but I don't tend to watch them in Apple Music because it's kind of hard to get there. They don't have the seamless switch back and forth, or at least they didn't last time I tried it. Maybe they added it and I didn't realize it. I yeah. end up watching them on YouTube. I don't, I don't even, do you watch music videos much? I, I, I mean, I've watched not like us probably 1100 times at this point, um, this year, but, but yes, there are certain music videos where I'm like, Oh, you know, it's, artistic and iconic and you know I want to know what other people are talking about and you know it's great music videos to me are not what they used to be when I would come home after school you know on the school bus you know and have like a good hour to watch MTV before my parents got home and maybe turn off the TV kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. you know music videos used to be something very different than they are now it's something that it's like, if you care enough about that artist, you will watch that music video. It is not just served to you. Yeah. And, and maybe, I don't know, maybe Apple for some does people that. it is. Do, do, like, do, do you remember Apple launched it? Uh, a, a music video channel in Apple Music. And it Nobody never, ever talks it about never it. It never caught on. Yeah. yeah. It, it just didn't ca catch on to me. And I, I use Apple Music, I mean, on a daily basis, for sure. That um, I don't actually have a spot. Well, I have a, uh, a free Spotify account, but yeah, I don't same. really use it. I, I never use it either. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm Apple Music, but I, I, I understand that the two are kind of neck and neck as far as all the features that you can have. Um, and what you can do. But yeah, I'm with you, Tom. Every time I'm like, all right, let's watch this video that everybody else says is so cool. I will, you know, 
you know, look it up on Chrome and a YouTube video will pop up. And that's where I watch it. I also tend to watch YouTube music. I watch music videos on YouTube on my television a lot. It's, I will watch them on my phone yeah. too, but uh, Spotify is not going to be able to take over from YouTube until it you think of it as a place for videos. And it's hard to think of it as a place for videos when it's not on your television. Uh, I think one of the hidden cool things about YouTube's algorithm is if you play enough music videos and then you play a music video, it's really good at just going into the next video as if it was MTV, but tailored to you. Uh, it, if it knows enough about you, it can be like, oh, I, I, you, you started with this music, so I know you like this song and this goes well next. It does a really sure. good job. You know, back in the early days of Apple TV, or I don't know, I mean, the, the mid days of Apple TV, Vivo, the app, mm -hmm. um, was exactly this. You just, you know, fire it up, you know, yep. play a song you like, and then it would just sort of be like, I think you might like this next song. It worked great. In fact, there there were a couple times where somebody would come over and be like, what is, what do you want? What, what channel is this? And I'm like, oh, it's Vivo. Mm -hmm. And they're like, never heard of it. Um, and it still exists. Um, definitely a, a partner with YouTube. But, but yeah, it was like, I was like, it, it kind of works like the old days of watching music videos of songs that you like and maybe you want to see what they also look like. Maybe you don't care, but sometimes I do. So yeah. there, there we go. There's some really good music videos still being made. And I think it's because sure. of YouTube, right? Because yeah. they know that's where a lot of people are going to see it. So Indeed. Uh, I think so to that point smart for Spotify to increase its music video streaming. Cause even if they don't take down YouTube, that's not the point. It's offering people another reason to stay subscribed to Spotify, which this will help do. Indeed. If you have feedback about anything that we bring up on the show, there's lots of ways you could talk to us, email and otherwise. But uh, in case you're a social media type person, we are at DTNS show on X uh, DTNS show at mstdn.social on Mastodon, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks with an X, DTNS PIX on Instagram and on Threads. Apple's new iPad Mini won't be part of a big October announcement because Apple just announced it. <laughs> they sent out a press release. Uh, it's the first upgrade to the Mini since 2021. And if I'm remembering right, only the third upgrade to the Mini. Uh, it runs on the A17 Pro, so it's not using an M series chip, not Apple Silicon. I mean, it's Apple Silicon, but it's the mobile one, not the desktop one. Uh, meaning faster and better AI, though, uh, because it is the current A17 Pro chip. Uh, will support Apple Pencil Pro. Uh, which is nice. The base model comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, which is double the previous mini. There's also options for blue and purple colors now. Uh, the 2024 iPad mini starts at 500 bucks. Pre-order now, shipping October 23rd. This is not the mini you wanted, though, Sarah. You want the Mac mini. I want the Mac mini. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it was funny. So Eileen Rivera, co-host on Apple Vision Show, we were talking yesterday uh, because we normally uh, record our shows on Mondays. And I was like, it was a holiday. And I was like, you know, I just have a gut feeling that something might be announced. Maybe we push our recording to the next day. Uh, which we're doing after we finish the show. And sure enough, we got the m iPad mini announcement. It, it Again, not the thing that I'm going to buy. I do not need an iPad mini. I, I, I think I need an iPad Pro, but, you know, one thing at a time. What I really need is a Mac mini. <laughs> Yep. So, I so know we'll you've just, been talking about that. We'll we'll just, you know, we'll 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 wait for the thing that uh is the thing that I'm waiting for. However, the iPad mini is a controversial product. Some people are like too small, you know, I I'm kind of in that camp, you know, too small. It's it's too close to my, you know, iPhone, you know, Pro Max. Um, in size, and I just don't really know what I would do with it that I don't either do with an iPhone or or a Mac, um, you know, of, of any size. Because it's 8.3 inch screen size, so for people who have a 6.9 inch phone, yeah, it's not that far away. It's not that far away. It's certainly 
bigger and it's different you know you're you're running uh, iPad OS but it it never made a lot of sense to me and i i feel like over the last few months of kind of just like being like yeah who even wants an iPad mini a lot of people have come out of the woodwork and been like i do I love the iPad mini. It's a good form factor for a lot of folks. It's, it's some, a small but vocal audience it's and a, apparently it, enough to make yeah. Apple put a new one out there. Yeah. You know, it's it's also, it's basically the same size as my Kindle Oasis, mm -hmm. um, which again, you know, is a very different product and does different things. But um, I find it to be just a little too small and I don't really know why. You know, if I have like a small paperback book that I'm reading, I, you know, I don't really care what the size is. I'm going to read it. But, um, yeah, there's something about the iPad that I, I just feel I want it to be bigger. But at the same time, I know this uh, was really good news for a lot of folks. And, you know, 500 bucks, you know, at least at the starting price, uh, not too shabby. 349 for the iPad Pro, though. <laughs> The entry level one, the small one. <laughs> like, I don't know why the mini is more expensive, but. Um, well, because here's of the, my, but the A17 Pro chip. Here's, the, here's my other question. Uh, if we're going to get another Apple announcement or not, uh, A, will we get an announcement or will they put out new Mac minis and iMacs and just put them out in a press release like this? Or will there be an Apple announcement? that it happens like October 21st or 22nd so they can have everything ship on the 23rd. And at the end of that announcement, they say, and last week we announced the new mini and now it's shipping on October 23rd as well. Oh yeah, maybe I'm not sure. I'm, I'm wondering how much, um, you know, Apple's, uh, pre-recorded announcements, which I enjoy very much, but I wonder like how much they're getting diminishing returns. They usually don't do them for spec upgrades, which is essentially what the iPad mini is like new chip, new storage, right? There's yeah. not a new look. Or yeah. Anything. And we've seen this before. And we've, that could be all you get with the new minis and IMAX is new chip, new storage. They don't look different. We're not going to do an announcement. I don't, I don't, I know need, you, yeah, I don't right? need to watch a two hour, uh, right. you know, unveiling thing with drones. You know, j just to 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 know what's going on with the Mac Mini. I don't even know that I would get an M4 Mac Mini, to be honest. Like, I might. I don't even have an M anything Mac Mini right now. So it's like maybe the M2 will be like a very. Good I've got price. an M1 in my laptop. It's a couple of years old now. It's fine. Yeah. So my my M1 I um I uh, I Mac uh Mac Air, great runs like yep. a champ. Indeed. I have no problems with that machine. And that was 2021. Well, we got a bunch of other products we want a lightning round through here today because Apple isn't the only one touting new gear ahead of the holiday series season. Uh, Microsoft refreshed the Xbox Series X and S consoles. I will never forgive them for that. X and S consoles. <laughs> uh, three new models, a $450 white all digital series X uh, a $600 black series X with a disc drive and two terabytes solid state drive and a new $350 white all digital series S with a one terabyte drive. Why in the, why in the world would you be mad about that? Tom? X it's and so, S. so easy to explain. I find to the similarity excessive, Sarah. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's excessive. Uh, we also have a $349 Ura smart four smart ring, uh, beginning shipping also has a slimmer design more sizes and more sensors for more accurate readings for anybody. It kind of looks like a wedding ring, but you know, it's, it's, it does other stuff. There's also a redesigned <laughs> app that comes along with the new ring available for other aura users. <laughs> does other stuff implies that it will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll marry you and more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's nice. It's nice looking. And I know there's a lot of aura uh, fans out there for lack of oh, a better sure. word. So, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Sonos is back. Remember, they were putting a pause on all hardware until they figured stuff out. And then they said, we can't figure it out. So we're just going to put our hardware out anyway. Uh, there's not a new app, but there is new hardware. The $999 Arc Ultra soundbar with 14 drivers capable of delivering 9.1.4 Dolby Atmos sound. Uh, and also the Sub 4, a full-size subwoofer, now with a matte finish. Listen, I want that Arc Ultra trust so bad but i don't know it's a little rich for my blood 9.99 eh, it's not a thousand i know <laughs> i know it's not a thousand but i would like it to be 5.99 if yeah. not less it's a nice like being able to try i mean even if it doesn't fully succeed but being able to do dolby atmos out of a soundbar is pretty impressive yeah it is Form Labs released a new larger version of its 3D printers. The 4L and 4BL can print objects almost five times as large as the 4 and 4B can, while still matching the speed of 80 millimeters per hour. The B stands for biocompatible, which can be used for medical applications as well. The pictures of it next to the original versions, the the L versions next to the originals, I, like make the, the originals look so tiny. I know. Like little toy ones. I know. Yeah. Uh, there. Home, home security company Simplisafe has upgraded its outdoor security camera. The outdoor security camera series two is same price, two hundred bucks, but has chips to support facial recognition on device. So what it does is learns your face, your family's face, maybe your mailman's face, I'm not sure, uh, or postal carrier's face, uh, but it can alert you when it sees a face it doesn't recognize. Now, one way to set it up is to alert a human SimpliSafe monitor who would then look at that and either trigger a siren, turn on the floodlights, warn the person through the microphone or alert authorities. It all depends on the situation. If you want that service, though, you have to upgrade from the $22 a month indoor security package from Simple is Safe to a new $50 a month security subscription, which includes outdoor as well as indoor. So it's more than double the price, but you get the outdoor stuff, too. Um, speaking of smart devices, smart home company Arlo launched the $150 hardwired Wi-Fi floodlight camera. It's the first to hardwire only camera from the company. Yeah, they did the, the wireless and wired combo before, but they never did wired only. So that, that knocks a few dollars off the price if that's the situation you're in. Well, one of my outdoor lights uh, currently won't turn off and no one in my building knows why. So... Hmm. That's well, a lot of fun better for that me in the bedroom. On, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I have blackout, blackout curtains. Blackout curtains. <laughs> so, but if I didn't, <laughs> yeah. nobody would be sleeping in that room. So, yeah, good times. Finally, Dan Compos sent us this update regarding Foxconn's plans to build an Nvidia bundling plant in Mexico. Hello, friends of DTNS. I come with some local news that might be interesting to you. In Jalisco, the governor Enrique Alfaro confirmed that the technology giant Foxconn has begun operating in the state. According to the governor, the Chinese company is already in the process of acquiring a mega plant, though the details about the location and the amount of investment will be announced in the coming weeks. This was also confirmed by the company's president, Yong Liu. Additionally, the vice president, Benjamin Ting, stated at the company's annual conference, Hon Hai Tech Day, that they are building the largest GB200 production facility on the planet. The GB200 is a super chip used for the next generation Blackwell family computing platform. For this and more news about tech and tequila, check the latest noticias de Tecnología Express. Back. Ah, Dan, putting the tech in tequila. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, where's that. the tequila? I, <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Blackwell Blackwell chips being built in Mexico. Uh, more diversification of the supply line. It gets more and more interesting. Thank you, Dan. Let's check out the mailbag. <sighs> Alison Sheridan writes, regarding the great discussion with Patrick Norton on how to be as prepared as you can for disasters, I have one idea to add. There's a terrific application called Under My Roof by Binary Formations that, adds, that aids you in creating a database for your belongings and of your documents regarding to your home your deed, your insurance, etc. When TWA stole our jewelry on a flight about 25 years ago, gosh, sorry to hear about that, Allison, the insurance agent smiled politely when I showed him receipts and then said, eh, 
that's nice, but I need photos of you with the jewelry. Allison says, this runs on Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS. Sorry, there's no Windows or Android version. Ah, uh, yeah. So get those pictures and put them in the database. Uh, Anon Jr., also writing in regards to that episode, uh, wrote, I was sick this past weekend, so fell a little behind. Documents that should be done by everyone and a copy kept somewhere safe include a living will, health care power of attorney, and that sort of thing. Some think it's morbid to bring it up, and others figure they're young and don't need to worry. I know all too well that it's true that tomorrow is promised to no one. Uh, Anand Jr. has been very forthcoming about his illness on our, on our Patreon comments. But, uh, but yeah, he ran into a situation where it could have gotten sticky uh it didn't, thank goodness, but he 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 was reminded of the importance of getting all these kinds of documents. And those are definitely documents you want to have uh, available in your to-go bag uh, so that you've got them with you, for sure. Thank was, you, Anon uh, Jr. Absolutely. Yes. Hundred percent. Um, yes. Um, and, and get well soon, our friend. Uh, Apple has a lot of power users. Sometimes we call ourselves hipster users, but you know, what, what, what's really going on in the Apple world? We obviously talked about some Apple stuff today, but myself and Eileen Rivera do a deep vibe, deep vibe, deep yeah, dive. You do. And also There's vibe. a deep vibe to your show. It's I agree. a deep vibe um, on all things Apple every week. It's called Apple Vision Show. We'd love to have you along for the ride. Get subscribed at applevisionshow.com. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. Uh, do you engage with more colorful social media posts? Science says yes. We're going to talk about that. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back doing it all again tomorrow with Scott Johnson joining us. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>